Good evening. Just wanted to uh, run up a quick uh, video on uh, this unit uh, here. This is uh, an 8663A uh, synthesized signal generator, and um, it fits roughly the same bill as my excuse me my uh, uh, 8657B does. Uh, in that uh, 100 kilohertz to two and a half uh, gigahertz uh, sort of range, you know, so it fits in nicely under the or two gigahertz range. So it fits in under the 8672A and 8673B. So uh, this I got uh, in a load of uh, gear as well, and uh, I thought I'd actually use this uh, um, uh, more often. Uh, but in, in reality, I sort of don't. Uh, I don't like the UI uh, uh, as much as I do the user experience as much as I do with uh, the 8657B. And so, uh, not only does it take up a little bit more rack space, but you know, I, I yeah, I just sort of don't. I don't like. It. Now, it does have some additional functionality. The 8657B is simple straight signal generator. This has a sweep mode. So I can set a start frequency, you know, and here I have start frequency 1 megahertz and a stop frequency of 639 and uh, I can give it uh, uh, a number of steps, let's say let's do it in a thousand, we'll do 100 milliseconds and I can say do a single sweep and now you can see that it's basically going to sweep that signal for me. So, you know, it would uh, uh, be a you know, a, a, probably a better uh, companion to my yeah, spectrum analyzer than uh, the 8567, no, sorry, the 8657. Uh, but, you know, I just don't like it as much. So I had it uh, sitting in. I, I had a chance to, to go take it in and, uh, uh, and get it calibrated. And let's just turn that off. Uh, the interesting little thing that you'll see here, if we go and take a look at here you know and now look in here when this zooms in what you'll see is you'll see the uh, calibration sticker now if you notice the uh, let me grab something to point at that if you notice interestingly there's a little HP symbol right here and there's a ca last cal date uh, of February this year. Now HP wasn't doing uh, cals by then; they'd already changed uh, uh, their name to Agilent uh, quite some time ago. So I have no idea who was out there with, uh, you know, creating little fake HP calibration labels uh, and sticking those on uh, on the equipment, but. Anyway, the, the actual piece of gear is a, a, a really nice piece of gear, and I did uh, get a chance to go and uh, uh, run it through the calibration uh, uh, lab at work. So let's take a, a quick look at uh, some of the functionality and uh, uh, see how it runs. Okay. All right. So here I have my five three one thirty one A again, and I just uh, synced it up uh, once more, calibrated it back to the uh, uh, GPSDO. So uh, uh, standalone on its internal uh, uh, set, it's uh, uh, pretty. It's bang on ten megahertz. So. What we're seeing here is roughly the uh, uh, you know the the internal clock of this and talking this. So uh, overall, the 10 meg sources are, are pretty good in both of them. Now uh, you can set this for excuse me, basically any frequency. You know, I'm going to hit frequency and then I can dial in say 1500 uh, megahertz. You know, and we'll jump up and we'll do the change. You know, I could go frequency and then I 
Yeah, go for example here, one, two, three, four point five six seven eight nine zero one megahertz, you know, and you'll see we get very close to uh, that value we're bouncing around by just uh, hertz. So it, it's pretty accurate in terms of the, the signal. Uh, and that's just off the standard uh, 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 signal information that, that, that's running here. So what I can also do is I can you know go in and uh, set my increment. I'm going to make the increment 10 megahertz, you know, and then as I step down, you'll see the uh, I'm there. I can go say the increment's going to be 100 megahertz, and you know, we'll drop down. So you know, all of this is fairly standard uh, type of stuff. I can also go in and I can set some sequences and uh, set up the modulation and so on. But we'll have a look at that in a minute. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the sweep timing here. Now, uh, because the sweep time can uh, is only uh, the dwell time basically on each thing can only go up to 100 uh, milliseconds, uh, uh, I'm going to have to turn the, the speed of this down a little bit. So let's go and select uh, uh, gate, we'll select digits, and then uh, I'm just going to go turn the digits right down to 3, you know, and then we'll go run and we should see here we've got uh, 645, uh, you know, uh, megahertz. So, you know, if we type in 645 and hit that, you know, they'll match. We're not showing very much here, but this is about the fastest gate time that I can get. I think this is like one millisecond sort of gate time here. So, let's set, uh, start off with 100 megahertz. We're going to go the stop frequency, and we're going to give that uh, 2 gigahertz. So, start at 100, stop at 2 gigahertz. Uh, and then we're going to do this in 1% uh, uh, log steps and I'm going to go do a single sweep and we should see that this uh, uh, stuff changes so here you'll start seeing the counter you see the counters match as we're going up by the, the log and as we get further and further along we'll start to see the counter accelerate because of the uh, uh, logarithmic approach to uh, dealing with that Now you notice we don't get the extra digit there because we're only getting the, the three digits and bam, there, uh, we're done. So that's just a very quick uh, example of, uh, of doing some of that, uh, uh, that digit work. What I want to do now is just look at uh, you know, the accuracy on some of the amplitude uh, stuff here as well as some of the modulation aspect. So to do that, what I'm going to go do is I'm going to use my 8902A um, uh, 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 measuring receiver, Don't, having a bit of a, uh, a blind spot, um, I added on into a measuring receiver uh, and that will let us look at some of the modulation here as well as the uh, the amplitude. So let me go get that set up and then go over to RF power again and we can have a look and we can see that you know at one gigahertz we're pretty close to to zero dBm there now, these things can go down to quite a low uh, value. So what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go um, use, uh, turn the, let me, interesting preset. Right, let me go turn on tuned RF. So now what we're using is we're actually using uh, uh, an ability of the unit to uh, tune its receiver in a very narrow band to specifically get uh, the right value with the right signal. So if we have a look at the frequency here, you know, we're tracking that frequency, so we're going to come in now, and what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go hit, uh, uh, I'm going to actually type in 27.9, I think it is. Hang on, let me check this. Okay, so to take a bit of look at the power and the modulation, we're going to use the 8902A measuring receiver. Uh, now this unit can only go from 150 kilohertz to 1300 megahertz, uh, which is no great problem because uh, we're going to go stick it just at 1 gigahertz and look at that, which is basically in the middle of the ranges there. Uh, if I wanted to go uh, lower, uh, higher than that, I could use my add-on unit here, which is the uh, 
11793A uh, microwave uh, converter and basically is a down converter that would let me go up to uh, I think 26 and a half gigahertz so we don't need to so first thing that I'm going to go do is to set up RF power on this so we'll select RF power and then we'll hit zero and then this is going to zero the head now inside this sensor head here is basically a little 8482A power sensor a 10 dB attenuator and uh, uh, a little switch that switches through the power sensor or through uh, the RF cable and takes us over to these two cables here. So now I'm going to go turn on the calibration source and you'll see that I'm pretty close already you know if we were to look at that as a, a DBM you'd see that we'd be we're in you know like 0 0.006 but we can get actually closer than that uh, by utilizing the, the, the save cal so let me turn on and shift and save the cal and now what it's going to tell us the value that's coming out of here is basically uh, 0 dB and so if we look up here at this value it'll be you know 0.1 dB which is uh, uh, close enough so let me turn that off let me go back to what otherwise we'll see a bunch of errors here uh, because the the math will fail due to the numbers being so low alright so with that all set up let me go put this back on the uh, um, uh, connect this up to the, 80, the 8663A and then we'll uh, uh, check some of its outputs okay here we are I have this uh, connected in now um, this is not the greatest shot because these things are, uh, are separated a bit but you can see that I have the, the unit set up here and if we zoom out and come back over here you'll see that I'm reading you know uh, probably about point you know, minus point two um, you know so a bit of losses there that's fine you know if I hit uh, frequency on here what we're actually reading now is the frequency that the unit is set for so if you remember back over here you know we're set for that uh, that frequency if uh, I go in here and I just change this to one gigahertz and then I come back over here you'll see that I'm reading the one gigahertz uh, item out of uh, here and in fact um, what I can do is I can type in let me zoom back out a little bit here I can type in um, let me clear this I can type in a, a special code 7.4 special and this should turn on the one hertz resolution uh, feature that this receiver uh, has assuming I didn't uh, screw that up I think I just had to type in 7.1 and 7.4 special now it takes a little bit of time as it gets it and there you go so we're pulling up you know uh, one hertz from uh, that unit there compared to uh, the GPS DO at one gigahertz so let me uh, go in and clear I've been using this previously let me go in and clear 39.9 special and so now what we're seeing is that we're uncalibrated here and so what I need to do is I ne when I select calibrate now what we're actually doing is we're swapping over the signal between these two items here and we're taking a reading with the 8400 series sensor that has actually already been calibrated and we're using that to calibrate the tuned RF meter so that we now know uh, what we're getting and so if we go have a look at that in terms of things we're getting you know a little bit of difference but still you know pretty good there so now what I'm going to go do is go over here and if we zoom in I'm going to set you know the increment the amplitude and we'll set the increment to 10 uh, dBm and I'm going to step down by 10 dBm and we're going to start reading uh, values each 10 dBm step on the 8902A and we can keep doing this because basically there are three ranges on the 8902A and at, at, at minus 40 and minus 80 what we'll actually get if we come up here and have a look is you'll see you get this this uh, recal and so what it's asking now is it knows that at the bottom of one range it's reading 40 
and it's saying do you want to calibrate the next range so that the top of the next range matches the bottom of the, the range before and I do so I'm going to hit calibrate and it's going to go think about that And there it is set up there now. So if I go down to minus 50, minus 60, it's going to take a little longer each time because there's less signal, so it's going to spend a little bit more time, you know, tuning in and making sure that it gets the right signal. And then when I go down to minus 80 again, I should see the uh, recal or the uncal uh, uh, enunciator come on. I hit calibrate again. And it's going doing that same thing again. So we had, you know, we already knew that it was minus 80 down the bottom of this range, and we're now at the top of this next range. So it's now setting the two minus 80 points together. And so if I go down to minus 90, it'll take a bit of time. This bottom range is fair, is utilizing uh, the RF preamp at the front here. Um, should sort of locate it over here. Uh, that was the thing I was having a problem with in one of my previous uh, items. You know, I can go down to 100. And then eventually we get down to uh, minus 120 dBm, which is the minimum uh, major increment that I can set uh, on the unit uh, here, and we should see minus 120 dBm up here. So you know, what we're seeing is we've basically measured the output. The output's you know, less than half a dB off, which is well within spec uh, for this unit. So if I change the increment to 1 uh, dBm, I might be able to get it down to minus like 129. I don't, this thing only reads to supposedly minus 127, so I don't know what will happen here. Uh, if we see it have six or so um, uh, bars, then what that's telling us is there's not enough signal for it to be able to track and so on. But there it's still reading. It managed to catch that and get to minus 129. So if I go back, I can now go to zero... Uh, dBm and we'll jump right back up set my increment to 10 dBm and so now we've tested the range and we're, we're, we're pretty good you know now you might want to just simply test how accurate is the the, the attenuator in the 8663 so what I can do is I can actually go in and say set a reference point there and now it basically zeroes that and so if we look over here at the item, you know, I have it zeroed here as well. So now, as I go down, I should quickly just see whether or not the 10 dB attenuator steps match. You know, and so it's getting 10 dB there. If we go to 20... It's got 20, if we go to 30. And I could go all the way through that uh, down to like its lowest levels, and then uh, what we would be able to see is how well those 10 dB steps. So it looks like the 10 dB steps are, uh, are doing pretty well uh, there. So once uh, we get our item back here, we'll go flip over and try uh, some of the uh, distortion. So here we are, minus 120 uh, uh, dBm. So pretty good. Let me go back to zero dBm there. And come back to, you know, frequency. 
And so if we come back over here, what I'm going to go do now is just focus in on uh, these parts here. So this that's where the modulation is coming from. Like the 8657B, it has an internal modulator. Um, the 8672A uh, and 8673B don't have... Uh, uh, actually, I don't know about the 8672B. Uh, the 73B. Uh, I don't think they have internal modulators, so you have to supply external modulation uh, signals to them. Um, but uh, here I've got uh, the ability to go in and... Uh, Set an AM modulation, and so we're seeing what the uh, uh, the AM modulation signal is. It's one kilohertz, and we're modulating it at ten percent here. So let me actually set that up as a twenty-five percent. So now we're on twenty-five percent there, and if we come back up here, you'll see that uh, you know I'm still reading a good solid uh, one gigahertz signal. But if I come in now and select uh, AM, what it will now do is go and do the math on that. It tells me that I'm actually getting 25% uh, um, uh, uh, modulation on that. Now, what I can also do is I can go in and say, okay, tell me what the audio frequency is. So here we are, we've got one kilohertz coming in. And so I can actually also come in and go, okay, well, what about the distortion on that? And so for that one kilohertz signal, I'm getting 0.19% distortion out of the uh, the unit. Oh, uh, I'm getting 0.19% distortion. So if I change this over to its internal 400 kilohertz, you'll see this jump right up because now that 400 uh, hertz signal doesn't match the one kilohertz item. So I have to tell this guy that it's now 400 hertz. And so if I do that, we now drop back down. And if I come over and look at the audio frequency, we see it's 400 hertz there, and it's you know bouncing around just uh, a little bit on that. Uh, so if I go and turn modulation off, you know, you'll see we have. Uh, uh, Zero modulation occurring a again. We're reading our frequency. I can come in and set uh, uh, frequency modulation. And so, if we go and have a look at like what we're setting here, you know, I have uh, 400 hertz internal signal set. This is this guy here, and I'm doing 20 megahertz of uh, internal uh, frequency modulation on there. So, if we come back up here you know and now I hit uh, FM we'll see 20 kilohertz so we're seeing 20 kilohertz on that oh, sorry did I say megahertz on that unit you know I wanted to point out it's actually kilohertz if we go have a look down there um, so we're seeing 20 kilohertz here and again I can get that audio frequency uh, from that and it's not quite as accurate on the audio frequency um, when we go and have a look at it in FM and you can see that I'm getting about 1% uh, distortion on that, uh, that audio frequency but again that's within spec for this unit so uh, what we've just seen here is some of the uh, the, the capabilities of uh, the unit here with uh, respect to the frequency modulation and so on. So with that, uh, the last thing I'd like to do is just pop the cover of the unit and we can uh, take a quick look inside. Okay. Okay, so let's see about getting this top off here. This is a uh, a little bit of a sticky unit, there we go. I don't want to sort of strip that screw out of the top there by trying to use it to pull the, the top cover off. But here we go with uh, 
what is uh, inside the, the unit here. Now, uh, I don't think I can get a, a real good uh, shot of this. This is uh, quite a large uh, unit here. So let me throw on my wide angle lens and see, uh, see what happens. So here we go. This is the unit. I think the, the widescreen um, wide angle lens should give us a, a little better look. Uh, I think mostly this side is responsible for the actual RF signal output and then this side is going to be responsible for the uh, uh, various modulations uh, uh, that occur and so what we can do is sort of have a look through and see how uh, things flow. Up the back here we're going to have our VCO uh, in the control in here somewhere because we're gonna, this is the VCO controller uh, loop uh, section here and so somewhere inside here is going to be uh, the, the oven with the, the 10 megahertz crystal in it uh, and that's going to give us our basic signal that will then be taken out uh, and used in uh, uh, various places uh, to go and uh, uh, do things. So, well, it's not going to give us a, in here's our 10 meg crystal, and then the VCO is going to give you, uh, I think, something like 320 to 640 um, as a uh, an output that can then go and be used in in other places. So, if we have a, a sort of a look here, we can see that there are some RF buffers but uh, I don't think they're related to sending the signal down here. So let's come back this end and start and see if we can sort of work our way back through. Um, ideally, I should read the, uh, uh, the service guide so to be able to explain what's going on. But this hard line here is actually the, connected to the end type connector on the front panel. Uh, and that's where it's going to get it at 0.1 to 2560 uh, uh, megahertz output. And this is a multiplexer. So it's going to take its signal, as you can see from these uh, entries here, in a couple of ranges, 0.1 to 120 uh, megahertz, 120 to 640, and then 640 to 2560 megahertz. Now the 640, 2560 megahertz is coming by this little hard line uh, that is served by this unit here. And you can see here that this does the output to 640 uh, by 250, um, 2560. And what it's actually doing is it's getting uh, an input uh, here that's uh, 640 to 1280 and then when it takes that it's uh, doubling this so this is 640 1280 coming into here 640 1280 uh, and then it's uh, coming out of here doubled to 640 to 2560 so that's giving us our uh, double range from basically the 640 to 1280 input now this signal here the 640 to 1280 input uh, is coming from another doubler. This is doubler number two. So doubler number one here is getting fed a 320 to 640 megahertz uh, input and uh, it's then outputting that uh, 640 to 1280 uh, megahertz signal which is then going and being used uh, around here to create the, the higher part of the, the doubler. Then uh, I'm trying to find where the 120 uh, 160 is coming from oh okay so this is orange orange right so up here on the pre RF you've got that 520 to 5 this, that, this guy here uh, the bands on this guy are 120 to 640 520 point one to 640 320 to 640 um, and so that 520.1 to 640 is the upper end of the primary VCO band by the look of it and that's being fed into this down converter here which is actually then converting that down to 1 to 120 megahertz from 520 to 640 so it's taking basically 520 megahertz off uh, this thing here so there will be a 520 megahertz input and you can see that uh, is this guy right here so that's how the circuit is basically a VCO that operates in a fairly small range uh, of 340 to 320 to 640, and um, then it's actually being doubled and down converted throughout uh, these areas here. That uh, then will put it out and uh, um, you know give you the the resultant signal that you're actually after. So up here. Uh, what we've got here is basically this looks like 
uh, a 10 meg output which is used to come into the phase detector and that phase detector is being used as part of the control loop to uh, manage the, the VCO so it's going and wrapping back around and we have you can see the AC out the ALC the automatic level control uh, board here it's wrapping all that back around so feeding back into the uh, the VCO and the associated circuitry to make sure that everything uh, uh, is working correctly. And you can see through the loop gain here, the doublers and so on, that there's a, a bunch of um, uh, tuning capabilities. So these things must have been held to actually bring back into, if they drift way out of specification. Fortunately, this guy it passes all of its manufacturer tests. Uh, as I was saying, I had a chance to get into the, the Keysight Cal Lab uh, at work and run it through uh, the actual ST, uh, TME um, uh, cal uh, key site calibration procedure and it passed all of that so it, uh, it it's a great good unit working well with inspect um, so over here at the front you know we have our basically we have the microprocessors and the the control capability uh, you can see where I set the, set the HBIB address in here uh, I don't know if that's a, uh, a fixed address. Like a lot of the units at this um, uh, of this age uh, were transitioning from actual switched addresses to uh, software addresses. So uh, you could say in like the the eighty six uh, uh, the eighty six seventy three, you could switch the address in, or you could flick a little uh, micro switch that would let you actually reset the uh, switch on the front panel. Uh, earlier products like the, the 8672A, you actually had to flick the individual switches, I think. Um, over here you can see the enunciators, which are going to tell you during the startup uh, what's going on. And in fact, if we plug this guy in and let's turn it on, we should see a bunch of these flash up. And you might be able to see those. I don't know if, they, if they're getting a good uh, uh, flash there, but basically the system booted up and, and came through. Uh, I'm not going to poke around because uh, I don't want to upset anything um, but if we tilt our camera a little bit uh, we, I might just be able to slide this over a little you know and so over here what we've got is we've got uh, our modulation drive unit um, and this is where we're going to do our uh, uh, FM uh, modulation it's from phase detection um, we're going to be able to go and uh, uh, do all of the looping on that. I'd have to go have a look. I don't know exactly whether these are actually involved in the ALC or in the modulation uh, stuff. We've also got a, a bunch of modulation uh, control in here. So this is probably the modulation control circuitry um, in there. But anyway, this is classic uh, uh, design for that uh, HP era where uh, what you had is you had uh, individual boards and so there'd be a little daughter board that lives uh, in here and then they're screwed into these uh, uh, aluminium enclosures and uh, they have a, a whole set of grounding ca uh, fingers and everything on them so they're all grounded inside their little uh, cage uh, to decrease noise and uh, enable the vast amount of circuitry that's uh, stored in there to, to be in here. And so uh, you'd see the same uh, design if you looked at the 8902 video, uh, 8902 a video I did, uh, and you see similar sort of design starting to appear in the 8673 uh, uh, B era uh, units as well. So that's uh, the inside uh, of the unit. Uh, there are some controls on, on the back of the unit here. Uh, I don't think there's anything particularly uh, earth shattering. So uh, I don't think there's any need for us to, to look at it. But we had a look, very quick look at the unit in operation and then how the, uh, the RF circuit uh, works to develop the, the output frequency. Anyway, uh, I hope you uh, found that, uh, that useful. Uh, I'll link in the uh, service guide so that you can actually go read uh, about what uh, uh, goes on. Because uh, I'm sure that I've made some mistakes. I'm not a, a huge um, RF uh, guru in how this uh, this system works here. So I uh, uh, hope you found it interesting. Check out some of the other videos. Let me know what you think. Catch you later. Bye.